hey, I just got off a job site using the Foxbox curb block and thought, let's put a video together and show you guys how we worked on this job site. And then I'll show you the videos I caught on site at the end showing the actual curb itself. So this here is our curb block. It's got a green tie. And the reason we made that tie green is that you won't use the curb block up down at the bottom of the wall. Um, we had that problem at the beginning. The, the workers would go and use it up not realizing that it's different than the other block. The outside dimensions of the block are identical. We have straights and 90s available in the curb and it can be used up anywhere in the wall. So we colored the tie green just to make it a little bit different. So now we do have this flange in the center. That's, that's the only difference other than the color. That flange is an inch and a half wide and the same thickness as the flanges in the foam. So now you need to make some cuts to make this curb block work. We're not going to make that curb for you because that curb could be for so many different types of floors. And I'll show you two examples here and the example on the job site was actually different yet. So first I'm going to do a 16 inch high curb. So if you have a floor choice of 16 inch and you want to have a curb on the outside of it, then this is how you would do it. You would make your cuts on this plastic, cut it down and right along the face of that curb. And this is what you would end up with. So now I have a, a surface to screw some plywood onto. That's the whole point of the curb. Once I have that screwed on, it's strong enough to accept concrete. So now I would probably cut a taper in the top if needed, and it would look like that. So as long as it's more than a 45 degree angle, you're gonna meet the engineering for it. So that'll be good. So now let's do an eight inch curb while we're at it. I would only cut the top cross tie and then I would cut down as deep as I want. An eight inch should be following our cut line that we have right on our block itself. But you could go down to the bottom tie here and that would be an 11 inch high. So now if you put a sill plate up on the top, you could put a 12 inch floor diaphragm in there very easy and have a nice concrete ledge, eliminate all your joist hangers altogether. So that's what the whole point of the curb is. So you would cut down as far as you need and take that off. So now you can see where that we can't really make the curb for you because there's so many different options for curb. So now these cutoffs, you can run them through the table saw on this job that I was just on, they did that. And then you clip that onto the top and you could go as high as you want at that point and screw the plywood on, attach at the top and pour concrete. So that's one other option there. So now, what am I gonna do here now? I'm gonna put the plywood on. So now for the eight inch curb, I have a piece of plywood here See if I can line my holes up. I just want to make sure that it's flush on the top, you know. And that's about all there is to it to make an 8-inch curb. So because I've, I've cut this taper in the, in the front face here, I place concrete, I can place concrete down this four inch cavity. And you can see that gives me that four inch curb and a six inch shelf. So you can easily put hollow core slabs on top of that. You could put your rebar butt out up on top of that. And then you just remove this plywood after concrete placement. The next day you could remove them and you've got a nice concrete, solid concrete curb. Another spot people use these is in garages. You have a grade beam or stem wall in the garage and you don't want to see foam, you could do something like this, put your wood wall above that, your floor down here, now you have concrete curb. So you don't have to contend with this foam covering it up inside the garage. So that's another use for the curb block. So now this 16 inch high one, let's try and put this plywood on. Again, make it flush with the top of the wall. So there you go. Typically I'd use half inch or five eighths inch plywood. I just had three eighths with me. On the eight inch, I think three eighths is gonna be enough. A lot of guys use OSB on the job I was just on, they use the OSB, but here you have a four inch concrete going up here. With the taper, it turns into six inch concrete. And then you could rest your floor on top of that, put a sill on top of that. And in a lot of cases, you don't even need the taper. But in this case, I did do it. On the bottom here, I did not do a taper. Now, you may not need it because it's going to give you a four inch ledge of concrete, which is more than enough for a wood floor. So 
you would typically want to just leave it like that and place concrete. You can trawl it off and later on put your sill on. Sometimes you want to get the sill on first. I would put that on here now. And what I did is I took a two by six. I knew this was six and an eighth because I used three eighths plywood. If it was half inch plywood, it'd only be um, six inch, which in which case I could use half inch plywood on the back of this as well. And I just put some scraps on to space it. You could put those straps on the front as well and make it solid in the back either way. This allows me to easily screw the sill on here. Now I can place concrete, run the vibrator down there and consolidate it really well. Another thing I can do is every so often I can put a strap on here with a couple of screws just to keep this from lifting when I consolidate. And that gives me a curb, makes a really nice curb. So now here for a 16 inch floor, that'd be great. Now, why would you want to do this on a wood floor when you could just put a wood floor out? Well, on the jaws we, we have been doing this on, their backfill is coming up higher than the wood floor in which case they have to do something and this gives them that solution. Some guys just want this insulation on the outside and it eliminates all that issue on the inside. Now they are completely done. So that's why we have a curb block. So now let's take a look at this video I have just showing the end result of a curb block and you can decide if a curb block is good on your job site. It's not going to be for every job but for the jobs that need it it's just a lifesaver. It works really well. So take a look at this video here. Hey, I'm on a job site where they use the Fox Blocks curb block and I just wanted to show it to you to see it in action. They just finished placing concrete two days ago and now they're stripping all the wood off of it. So here if you take a look at it, you'll see they cut the block down eight inches, cut a taper into the block, so that gives them five inches of concrete to play with. Actually they could get all the way up to I think six, but that's an eight inch block so at the top there they have four inches of concrete and down on the bottom they have a sill so they can rest the floor on. This is going to be a concrete floor on this side, but if we come around the corner you'll see here they actually have a 20 inch high curb and that's four inch wall going 20 inch high and below that is eight inch and a taper in that. So it's exactly the same method and you can see they use a 2x6 and some OSB and a 2x4 on the top and some straps across that and place concrete and they end up with a really nice straight curb.